In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to do better page statuses in Confluence. This video is sponsored by my good friends over at Midori, and we're going to be taking a deeper look into their better content archiving page, which we have looked at in the past. But today we're going to be focusing on their status and document workflow features that we definitely didn't talk about last time. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out the links down below so that you can start your free 30 day trial to better content archiving. Don't want to sleep in because I got something to prove. I got to take what I hate and finally make a move. So let's explain a typical situation. When we have documents or when we're creating things in Confluence, we want to be able to have statuses. But if you recall, statuses is a really thing that is fundamental to the DNA of Jira, but in Confluence, not so much. Now, most recently, Atlassian has made some changes to Confluence where you do have the ability to add statuses to a page, but you're limited to only five statuses inside of Confluence. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how better content archiving will let us go beyond those five and how we're going to be able to make much more customizable statuses that are more and better aligned with your specific document workflows in your day to day lives. But first, let's start off by taking a look at the configurations. We're going to talk about how do we configure better content archiving so that we have the statuses that we want. And then I'm going to show you everything you need to know to use this tool successfully. All right, let's jump into Confluence. So within Confluence, you do want to be a site level administrator or at least a Confluence administrator so that you can get to these settings. So we're going to click on the gear. So once you click on the gear, you're going to scroll over here to the left and we are going to be looking for our app called Better Content Archiving. So you just got to find it down here under apps. Once you're there, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to modify the configuration here for content status configuration. So go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to talk about a couple of different things that are happening here. We're going to come back to the status schemes here, but first we want to click on content statuses. So this is the section where you create statuses. In fact, you're going to be able to create them and delete them. We're going to talk about some of the other configurations you're going to do here, but this is the most important part about what we're going to be talking about today is getting these statuses configured and set up correctly so that you and your team and all the users of Confluence can leverage these statuses downstream. So let's take a look at what we have going on here. So these are the out of the box statuses. I haven't touched any of these. These are just what better content archiving ships with and a couple of things that I want to walk you through it. Number one, these may or may not work for you. If they don't work for you, you may want to add your own statuses. So whatever your workflow is today, check against these statuses. And if you see something that's not there, or rather, if you don't see something that you expect to be there, worry not. All you got to do is click on this add new status button here. And this is going to give you a pop up for the status that we're going to create. Let's do a status called update docs from PR. Okay, so whenever our developers are making changes to our code, we want them to come in here and make some changes to the documentation so that our documentation is always up to date. You can put an optional but useful description. This is to help our devs update documents because you know that that is always a big pain. Now you can also change the color here. So you can do whatever color you want, probably avoid red, but let's go with the blue. And then you can also change the icon. So you have all these different icons to choose from. And I'm going to see if I find one that looks like a document. This one kind of does. And we're going to click save. So that's the first step. This is essentially how we add statuses. Just because these statuses exist though, doesn't mean that they're now available in the project. For that, we're going to have to switch on over to the scheme that we were talking about earlier when we first landed into this configuration. And now we're going to make those statuses relevant. So very similar to the statuses, you can add a new scheme, you can delete schemes, we can apply them to spaces and we can make them defaults. So let's talk about each of these in detail. First, let's talk about adding a scheme. So just like with adding a new status, we can click on the add new scheme button here. And when we do that, you're going to again be able to add the name, the description, and most importantly, we're going to put the statuses into this container. So let's give this one for software lifecycle of documents. And this is going to be ensuring documents are always updated. Now we are going to add our statuses. So we're going to be able to pick from all the available statuses that we have. So we're going to want approved. We're going to want draft. We're going to want expired. We're going to want locked, right? Because once your document is locked, maybe we want to keep it locked. 
we're going to do rejected. Maybe the developer hasn't done it in a long time. We're going to have review in progress to archive, to delete, to review. And then let's do this update docs from PR that we made up earlier. And we just click OK. So you just bring some of those contents in. And so now you have all these different statuses. And I, I realized that I may have gone a little overboard and brought in too many statuses. But let's talk about what we're seeing here. Number one, you see your statuses, right? So this is pretty trivial. These are the exact statuses we covered in the last section. So they're all in here now. But what is different, what is new, is this CQL condition. Now CQL is just like JQL, but you can kind of replace the J with the C, Jira query language, Confluence query language, right? And although JQL is very well documented and very well known, and a lot of people come to depend on it every single day, CQL is not as obvious to use as Jira's. So fortunately for us, we have a couple of cool things here. So number one, First, I'm going to say don't freak out if you don't know CQL because this tool does a really, really good job at helping us out. So a couple ways that it helps us out. We can click on this little diamond star looking icon. And when you click on that, it's going to give you some common CQLs that are used. Now, these are not going to be specific to like approved, but these are just going to be common examples that you may want to consider using. And so as you can see, we have the options of doing not viewed within the last 100 days, if a label has a specific value, or if a label has any of these specific values, we can have where the title has a specific word, we can do where the, where the page is a child of a specific parent. So there's a lot of examples here that we can choose from. And if you want even more examples, you can click on this link, this is going to take us out of Confluence, but it's going to take us to Atlassian's main documentation. So this is going to give you an official documentation from Atlassian on to how CQL works. But most importantly, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video because Midori themselves has a really, really cool blog post that they've put that basically walks you through how CQL works from their perspective. So I'm going to click on this right now and it's going to redirect you to Midori's global website where it's going to give you the most common SQL query examples that you're going to want to leverage for your utilization of their plugin. So this is going to be a good overview of what's possible for expiration, for archiving, for exclusions, for owners, for analytics, statuses, right? We have a lot of cool little things here. So again, check out the description so you can check those out. So now all you want to do over here is basically start setting up your CQLs. So what we want to do is we're going to want to copy some stuff here because I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I'm not very good at being creative. So we're going to do approved. And what this does is whenever a label is added to a page, and that label happens to be the word approved or contain the word approved, then the status of that page is going to be updated to be approved. And so the same thing we can do with the rest of these. Now, if you really do want some inspiration, because this can be a little bit overwhelming, I recommend you go take a look at an existing one because these are already available for you. So just open up the general one and you're going to be able to see when you look at these that it kind of helps us out to already understand what these should look like. As you can see, we have an excluded here where arc.exclusion equals true. And again, this is ripping the CQL straight out of Atlassian's documentation. And so use these as inspiration so that you can then create your own. Now, one other thing that I do want to talk about is why are there two? Why are there two rows here? Well, this is the main CQL. So if this CQL is actually met on a particular page, this is going to basically take effect. So if we were to set the um, exclusion to be true, and I'll show you what that looks like in the UI later, or let's just say that we want to archive it now, right? We're going to be manipulating the page based on the values that are available to us in the UI, and we're going to trigger so that we can move to these statuses. Okay, now that's on the main page. That's on the actual page that you're on where you're going to be clicking on the UI. But however, if you also want the rule to apply to the children, so any children pages that are associated to that main page you're working on, well, that's where this is going to come into effect. So this code here, specifically the arc exclusions inherited equals true, is basically going to apply the rule 
the CQL to not only that main page, but also to all those children pages. So if that's something you want to do, then make sure you're populating both rows so that you take care of the main page you're interacting with and any ancestors of that specific page. So that's how you are going to deal with that. And again, this is a way for you to look at the existing schemes so that you can have an easier time when you're making your own schemes. Now, I'm going to skip making my own scheme for now because in the interest of time, I want to not make this video as boring for you. So we talked about how to add a new scheme. I gave you the examples for the CQL. Go and interact with those. And then I showed you how to open up an existing one so that you can take a look at them. Now, if you don't want one, right, for whatever reason, you didn't want this review content scheme or you accidentally made one, well, all you got to do is hit the delete button here. And then again, you're going to be able to delete it. Once you do this, it's undoable. So only hit this button if you're 100% certain that you want to delete the scheme. I'm going to hit cancel for there. Now out of the box, this content scheme is going to be the default content scheme that is applied to your spaces. Now, if you don't want that to happen, if you don't want that one, but rather the new one you made or a different one that's already on here, all you got to do is click on this make default. And then this is going to become the default one that all spaces are going to be utilizing going forward. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. But the most important part is once you are ready to apply your statuses and your content status scheme to a space, all you got to do is click on this apply to spaces button. And then you're going to be able to set it up for whatever space you want. As you can see, all of these spaces already have it because this is the default one. But let's go to a different example. Let's assume that we wanted to apply a different scheme. This one, for example, we can go into it, click on it, and then I'm just going to apply this one to that particular space. I'll click apply, hit yes. Now this scheme is now going to be applied to that space. Now, a couple of things for you to remember. This little warning pops up. So anytime that you're making changes to the rules, to the CQL, you're adding new statuses, you're adding new schemes, it is a really, really good practice to come in here and click refresh because what this is going to do is it's going to go and basically run a job that is going to recalibrate everything for us and it's going to reapply all the new rules that you've made so that when you go into confluence you have the latest and greatest so what we're gonna do here though just to kind of explain how this all works we're gonna go and add our status that we made earlier where we're gonna do our update docs from pr we're gonna click ok and this is gonna add it in here so we now have it available here and my jql is gonna be a very simple we're gonna do label equals let's look at this demonstration here to make sure we cut it correctly we're just going to do this and then we're going to do the label of SW update. Okay. We're going to copy the same thing. All right. And then click save. So that basically means that whenever a page is going to have this label of SW update, it's going to take effect. We're going to let this refresh now so that it runs in the background and let's jump back into confluence. All right. So now that we know how to do all the different configurations and we've ran our job to do any updates if necessary, let's now go into a confluence page and take a look at how we can leverage this information. So back in confluence, I'm just simply going to go to a space. I'm going to go to this demonstration space here and I'm going to randomly pick a page. So let's just go with this retrospective for June 9th. And over here on the right hand side, the farthest right here, this is where you're going to see the status of this page relative to the logic and conditions of the Better Content Archiving app. Now we can click in here and we have a couple of different options that we can do. We can click on this edit pencil here to update it. So we can go and update the actual page itself. We can also confirm. So if we want to be able to confirm that this page is still up to date, right? We can come in here and be very proactive and say, yes, this one's confirmed. We can also take a look at some analytics of this particular page. We can look at all the updates and the views of this page. But most importantly, I want you to look at these ellipses here. Let's talk about set owner. We're going to work our way down. So set owner is going to allow you to dictate who is the owner of the page. Now in Confluence, you can have one owner, but with better content archiving, you can actually add more users. Now, I am a team of one, so I don't have any more people. But in your confluence, because you're going to be in a real world environment, you're going to be able to add different owners so that you can have more than one owner, which is a really big limitation of confluence itself. Next up, we can set the expiration. Now, we have logic that is in our CQL to determine when a page should be expired. But if you want it to expire it now, we can actually just set that expiration date now or in the future or in the past, and we can set it manually. 
Same thing with archiving. If we wanted to set the archiving now, right, we want to just enforce it. We can do it in the past, present, or future and just set it manually so we don't have to wait for the JQL condition to be met. The other thing we can do is if we wanted to exclude this page, right, we can also exclude it so that none of this pages or descendants are going to be impacted by the better content archiving. So we can exclude those there. And that's pretty much it. So now the last thing I want to show you is how do we then use the labels to trigger these page statuses? Because as you can see right now, it's set to update. All right. So back over here on our page, we're going to simply add a label and we're going to call it SW update. And this label is going to match the label that we just made. So when I click on that, we're good there. Now, all we need to do is wait a little bit. And this status over here is going to update itself to not be under that software update status that we made earlier. And after a few minutes, you're going to see that the status of the page does indeed change. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to see an overview of all your pages. Well, this is really simple. So in this space, all we're going to do is scroll down all the way down here to the bottom left corner. We're going to find better content archiving. And this is going to give you an overview of this particular space and all the pages that are in their relative statuses. So as we can see, our update docs status that we made from earlier, it has one page. Let's talk about track for a second. Sometimes you will see that this doesn't always say 100%. And one of the big reasons that is, is because pages have restrictions. Now, anybody can add restrictions to a page. And while normally this would show a decrement, you can, however, go and add better content archiving as a user to that restricted page. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go over here on my left hand side to a page that I have restricted. You'll notice that this says status not available yet. So I'm going to click on that and it's going to give me a hint. It's going to basically tell me, hey, we can add it if you add the user better content archiving as a user that can edit this particular page. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So you just click on the little lock here and we're going to type in better. And this is going to pull up the user. We're going to leave can edit and we're going to click on add. Once you do that, click apply. And that's all you need to do at the page level. Now we're going to go back over to better content archiving for this particular space. And you can see that after we added that user, now we're back to 100% tracking. Now this doesn't happen automatically. You have two methods here. You can wait for the page to refresh. As you can see, mine just refreshed 15 seconds ago, or you can go into the settings back into better content archiving through the gear and force a refresh then. And then you're going to get the most up to date statuses. Being able to see all the pages within your space and see their statuses is cool, but let me show you something even cooler. We can click on apps in the navigation bar and then click on better content archiving. And this is going to open up a global content status overview where you're going to be able to see all your spaces and all the pages, everything that's tracked and all their statuses. So this is a very, very macro, super high level, but you can see everything, which I think is really, really neat. There's one last feature that I want to show you that is really cool. When you get better content archiving, you don't only get the dashboards and the overviews and all the cool stuff that I showed you, but you also get a special macro that you can embed on any page. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to create a brand new page called status report for Alex. So I'm going to click on the plus button up here to add the macro and I'm going to type in content. And as you can see, we have the content status list. We want to select that. And then we want to click on the pencil. And over here, we want to add our CQL. So reference the link down below so you can see all the different options that you have available to you with respect to CQL. But in this particular case, I just want to see the status of any page that I'm the owner of. So I'm just going to simply drop in arc.owner in current user. And that's it. You just click the X and then hit publish. When you hit publish, this is going to actually publish the page. But as you can see, it's already giving me a teaser. But now you're going to see all the different pages that I am the owner of, and it's going to give me the status of those pages. Now you can get very creative here with that CQL so that you bring in very specific information. But this is just a very simple demo of what's possible with this macro. That's it for this video. If you found it useful, make sure you smash that like button. And if you really like this app, make sure you go and use the links down below so you can start your free 30 day trial of better content archiving. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. So